Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to get started on this Acme nut right here. This is for the, the uh, G&E shaper for the tool slide or the tool head. And I want to re reproduce this. I have got a piece of inch and a half ductile iron that I bought from McMaster Car that we can use. And I got some extra so that it would make, you know, a few of them. And, in case I mess the thread up and cut it too large or uh, make a mistake or anything like that. So we got some extra material there for that. And this is the screw that we are going to be matching that thread to. This is the one that goes down through the tool slide there. And we've got it all cleaned up. We've made our little modifications here. So the last thing we need to do is get the nut made. So this diameter is inch and a sixteenth. And it's a five thread per inch Acme thread. So what I've been doing is figuring out the dimensions that I need to know for machining that thread in this nut right here. We got to figure out what our minor diameter is, which is what the hole size will be whenever we machine that. And then the thread depth, whenever we go to a thread that. I'm gonna be using a a 5 8 bar this is a JH Williams 5 8 bar this is a good this is a good bar right here and this will give me enough clearance using this 5 8 bar to go through there and machine that thread out of there I always like to go as large as that I can and I think that this is going to be the largest bar that I can fit through this hole with a tool bit sticking out of there okay Three quarter would have been better, but it just wouldn't have given me enough room for the bar and the tool bit to clear through the nut. We're also going to be grinding up a tool bit. So I have a brand new Momax 316 square tool bit right here, and we'll just go ahead and grind one up. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to share that on video. I've got my granddad's Acme pitch gauge right here. This is a Starrett number 284. And this gives you your different threads, your Acme threads that you have to match your tool bit to, right? Um, what I was going to say was that my dad already has one of these tool bits ground up that I could use. But I know a lot of guys enjoy seeing the tool grinding on, on this channel. So that's why we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our own tool bit to use for this job and share it there on the channel. All right. I've also got my granddad's machinery's handbook right here. His was the 13th edition in this nice aluminum case that he made to protect it. And I was using this to go in there and verify some dimensions, kind of brush up on my knowledge on Acme threads because Acme threading is something that I have done, but I've done, I've actually done very little Acme threading. There's been a few jobs throughout the years that it came into the shop that I did, uh, but it's just not an everyday thing. So. When you don't do that every day, you kind of have to go back and you got to, you know, you know, rethink what you're doing and make sure your dimensions are right. So all of this information is available in the machinery's handbook. OK, it's out there for anybody. And I'm not a I'm not a mathematician, but I'm going to share with you the basic mathematics that you need to be able to machine this thread right here. OK. So I'll get you down here for a tighter shot. We'll look a little bit more in depth of the, uh, the thread dimensions. And then we're going to go set up and we're going to use our Acme pitch gauge right here. And we're going to grind us a tool bit in. All right. So this is my little scratch pad and making some notes on my, my thread that I'm going to be cutting. A five Acme thread. So whenever you're trying to figure the depth for your Acme, it says right here on the gauge, the depth of the thread is half the pitch plus 10 thousandths. So the plus 10 is for clearance. We're going to be we're going to be hand fitting this. So I'm not necessarily worried about the proper depth plus the 10 thousandths. I want to try to hand fit this to make it as close fit as I can with very little in play or backlash in the screw. That's what my attempt is. You have different thread fits for Acme. You have two you have 2G which is a standard general purpose fit. Then you have 3, 4, and 5G, and those are all tighter tolerances uh, when it comes to manufacturing the Acme thread, depending on how, how loose of a fit 
you want in between the threads right there i'm going to be shooting for a four or five g but like i said we're just going to be hand fitting this so i'm not i'm not hung up on the actual numbers of what we're cutting as i'm running that tool bit through there and how the depth i just want to fit them i want to hand fit them so our thread size for the for this right here our diameter is inch and a sixteenth so that's our major od so the depth of the thread is half of the pitch now on a, on an acme your pitch is from one thread to the other and it's usually measured right in the center line okay but it's from one point to the other so what is the pitch for a five acme well that's two hundred thousandths okay if you take one inch and divide it by five that's 0.2 that's uh, so 200 that's what your your uh, pitch is for that particular thread so your depth if you're looking at this screw right here if you're cutting this screw your depth is going to be half of that which is a hundred thousandths 0.1 plus ten thousandths and that will give you your proper depth when we when we're talking about your other uh, thread fit classifications you're taking a hundred thousandths plus say like six thousandths or eight thousandths you know that's going to change up your your fit all right on our minor diameter which is what i'm going to be working with right here we're just going to be subtracting the depth which is a hundred thousandths so you got to double that because that's per side so that's two hundred thousandths so our minor diameter which is going to be our bore size here should be 862 now if you look at this original thread right here and i measure this and it looks like they got it right on 0.862 maybe 863 864 somewhere in that range so that puts you right there where you need to be for your minor diameter and i believe this is where i was figuring the uh the fit uh, let's see that was your that's your pitch right there 200 thousandths and your depth, 200 thousandths divided by two is 100 thousandths. And then your 10 thousandths added to that for your 2G fit. All right, that's just some notes right there. Again, get yourself a machinery's handbook. It's all right there in the book, okay? We're gonna put a little bit of dicum on the, the end of this so that it's just a little bit easy, easier to to see we'll scribe some lines to uh, try to follow now one thing to remember for an acme thread 29 degree so each side is 14 and a half degrees that info info is given to you on the gauge there as well so i'm going to use granddad's little angle gauge right here it's cut off and i'm going to come in here once that's dried and i'm going to scratch a 14 and a half degree angle on one side we'll get that ground in and we'll we'll make sure that it's good with the pitch too this is your gauge that you use to make sure that the tip of your tool is square with the side angle and you can use this one here to make sure that it is properly ground to your 29 and a half degrees All right, let's go get it ground in. Once we get the tool bit ground the way we want and it's properly fitting the gauge, then I'll go over there and use a, a cutoff wheel and actually cut it to the proper length. Got to also make sure that you have the proper side clearance and nose clearance there but the way that i grind my tool bit so it's automatically built in because i have my platen here the tool rest in the very center of the wheel
Boy, it sure is easier than grinding those one inch bits. I know it's hard to see on that, but you just sneak up on your line. I'll be checking it like this, but I can't do it on the camera. I need to look up at my lights to make sure that I have everything right. Right now I'm using the, the nose of the tool because that should be ground pretty square from the factory. And I'm gonna try to ensure that the nose is square with that the first side, like that. I've been using the angle gauge to try to help me get this first side square because I want to maintain the squareness of the tool being ground parallel with the shank of the tool bit. So I've been using this gauge right here and I've got it about as close as I can get it. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and start grinding the left side of the tool bit there. And then we'll use this part of the gauge to make sure that it's square and that it's the proper profile. I went ahead and scratched the other side at 14 and a half degrees so I'd have a good reference on angle. This is where you're going to be checking it to make sure that it's right. But you also have to use this side, so we're going to be using a number five. Wow, I'm almost there right now. So that tool needs to fit, fit in that gauge. I'm having to grind the, the nose of the tool to make sure that has a nice grind on it and I want to make sure that that stays square with the shank. So I'm using this little machinist square like this to ensure that the nose is perfectly square with the shank of the tool, okay? I had it perfect. I mean, I had a dead nuts on, but I hadn't ground the end of the tool bit yet. So I'm, ha I'm gonna have to go back and touch the side again. And, but I just wanted to show you that's how you square up your nose as a tool right there. Before I finish off any uh, additional side relief that I'm going to need in there, I believe I have it dang near perfect. I'm going to take this, this hone right here and I'm going to try to hone a little bit of a radius right on each corner of the the tool. By the way, the machinery's handbook does go into what, how much proper radius is supposed to be on each tool bit there. And uh, it can be a little bit confusing. But I'm just going to put a slight radius because I know that's what needs to be there. Side there, I keep missing it. All right, we have verified by looking up at the light or outside. It's I got my Durango sitting out front there, so I'm able to look at it with the white paint in the background. And I can see that my tool bit is perfectly square with the nose. Same thing with this gauge. You want your angles to match up perfectly. So 
I'm taking this and I'm kind of looking at it through the light there. And I'm very happy with that grind. It is a very, very close tolerant grind right there. All right, we're getting close. I'm happy with the geometry of the of the grind. So now I am finally honing it. I want to have a nice honed cutting edge on the tool bit. So we're putting in some nice hones before I go over and grind the relief on the bottom of it. I'm going to go with the coarse side first on this, this hone here. And it's cutting in nice. And then once I get it one side honed, I go over to this real fine side. We'll do this one because I'm about done with that one there. And it puts almost like a rainbow mirror finish on that on that tool bit there. So we're going to go back to the grinder and I'm going to grind a little bit of relief on the bottom and I'm, I'm doing this as to kind of show you if you imagine this our cutting edge is going to be on the center line of the tool bit or center line of the bore I mean and then you you need to relieve a little bit of this here so that you don't have rubbing so we'll go in there and we'll relieve the bottom edge so that as that thing's going through there, it will not rub the bottom of the tool there, okay? Okay, we got our bottom relief there so that we clear our workpiece, and then all we'll be touching is the is the cutting edges there. Okay, so we're just about done. Now we just need to cut it to length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in here, and I want to kind of get an idea on uh, where I want to cut this off. This is where I'm talking about why you got to use a, a small enough bar to get in there and have enough room for the tool bit to uh, let's try it this way. Always trying to give you guys a shot so have to be kind of clever with our with our setups here. Got the bore and bar touching the back. I'm thinking we'll start right there, so we're just going to make a little mark on the back side. It's okay to make it a little long because you can cut it again or grind some of that off. So we're going to we're going to line our cutoff wheel right there, and if we need to, we'll go over to the grinder and just grind the back off a little bit. All right. Recently I was up in Birmingham doing some filming with work and while we were there they were doing another video with uh, one of the 3M reps and he had these these grinding wheels there which he gave me after they did the filming and said I could have them and try them out. Uh, what these are is the new grade of abrasive from, from 3M, they're called silver and these are supposed to be great for uh, tough material such as stainless. I know they they were uh, cutting a piece of stainless square stock as an example and they're supposed to have really sharp abrasive 
particles in there that are triangulated and sharp at all times. So it's supposed to be really good cutting wheel. And I'm gonna, I've been wanting to try one out. So there's the one that they used. And they got a whole stack of them. We got them in 45,000 stick and also 40,000 stick as well. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna try one out and uh, see how it cuts this high speed steel. I got me a new blast shield to use around here. This is the kind that I use at work. I always like using my, uh, that one was a little loose there. So anytime you grind, you're always supposed to have eye protection and face protection on. It's a good thing to protect yourself and so you don't get hurt. So I always use my earplugs. Grinders just, loud noises just bother my ears now. I guess it's because I've been around it long enough that I didn't do it when I was at a younger age. So I always have my earplugs in and my safety glasses on and my blast shield. All right, here we go. All right, we got the tool bit mounted in the bar. And I think we're going to have good clearance in there to be able to pass through. I like to make sure that the tool bit is not sticking out past the other side in tight tolerance situations anyway, so that whenever you whenever you retract the bar to make your next pass, you don't accidentally go too far and the tool bit be scratching your machined area in there. So I've got it just enough where you can retract the tool and you can feel the bar touch the material if you go a little bit too far, but you know in that that bar is not going to mess, it's not going to be trying to cut your threads. Okay. So I think that's, man, I think we're, we're ready to go. I'm real happy with that. I can feel, I can actually feel the little bit of wear in there, in those threads. Cool. All right, so next phase, we need to take our piece of stock, our inch and a half ductile bar, and go ahead and machine us out a blank, okay? We'll do the, what we'll do is use one lathe, we'll probably use the Victor to go ahead and machine this thing, uh, turn the diameter, we're going to get it parted off, I'll flip it around face the back side, then we're going to use the good old Monarch to do our threading, okay?